Hi, I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard um, from Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. Today we have a video, a video, um, and we're doing a sew along, a sew along where Gigi Bai will be leading us through Jen Kingwell's The Gypsy Wife Quilt, which is awesome. Um, so these are videos that Gigi will produce um, and help us understand how to do it. And Corey Dutton, um, a law student, is going to learn to quilt. So um, it's for beginners, advanced people, even law students. Um, and it will be great. So uh, I hope this helps. So where do you find the pattern? Um, Jen Kinkwell's pattern can be found at Amazon. It's again called the Gypsy Wife Quilt. It's super popular. You can also get it at Uptown Needle and Craftworks here in New Orleans. Just um, look them up online and call them or at any quilt shop. So get the pattern and join us. Okay, so for the Nurse's Cross, the first thing, I, I mean, you know, do it however you would like, but this, in the past, what has happened to me is there's so many pieces and so many fabrics that you're putting together and you can lose the, um, the pattern itself, like what's supposed to pop and how it's supposed to look if you don't really watch where your pattern placement is going. So if you look on here, it really does make a beautiful um, pattern in the middle. And so what I've done is I've gone through and I've labeled what each fabric will be on here. So I've, you know, I've got these little polka dots I'm going to do on the, this. It's like white and turquoise polka dots. Then I have a darker turquoise that I'll put on the inside so it'll pop. I have a different fabric for here. And so I've gone through and labeled everything. Then I cut my pieces. And so I cut out the paper piece in pieces and I've labeled them A, B, and C. And these are the pieces for A, B, and C that'll all go together. Then here's D, E, F, and G. And then over here, I've got the fabrics and the pieces cut for H, I, J, and K. So I'm hoping that will help keep me on track with what I'm doing to get this started. So I'm starting with piece A, or to get me going. And remember, you always want to start with your number one when you're paper piecing. And you're working, this is the back of your piece, so you're going to be working um, like so. You'll put your first piece on, and then it'll go to A2. And so here are my pieces for um, those. So I'll put them right sides together like so, and I'll sew along there my quarter of an inch, and then I'll flip this back, and I'll have my first piece on there to go. So we will get started with our um, paper piecing and um, go just slowly A1 to A2, then A1 to A3, and that piece will be finished and then I'll go on to B and do B1 to B2 and then B1 to B3 and then I can um, do my C and then it'll be ready to put together and I'll have my very first, the center part of my um, square block done. So good luck with that. Okay, so um, when paper piecing these pieces together, um, I made it harder than it needed to be. With the polka dots, I wanted more white to show, so I had to center them so that I would have less of the turquoise and more of the white, and you don't have to do that. Um, you can use just a more white piece of fabric. But anyway, um, don't forget you want to put, when you go to do it, let's look at piece C. When you go to put it together, you have this is the side you'll be sewing on. So you'll be putting your fabric on the other side, so you'll have your piece of fabric. Um, this is C1, and I'm lining it up, right side facing me, but it's wrong sides together here, because this is basically the wrong side of the piece you're sewing on. So here we go here, I'm lining it up, and I want to line it up like I did the others, so that I have um, half of the circles going off, but that's just for my pattern. So I have it lined up here, making sure that I am going past the dotted line on all sides where this piece will be. The dotted line is your cut line and the dark line is your sew line. So you want to make sure that you're covering your dotted line when you put your piece on so that you have something to cut. Then I have my other fabric my, um, for the triangles and I'm going to be going from C1 to C2. So I'll place this piece on top of this and these are kind of small pieces 
So I recommend pinning it. Um, the smaller they are, the harder it is to get them to stay in place. And so if you pin it, it just helps keep it um, where you want it to be when you go to sew it. Now the first piece goes, um, like C1 goes looking at you with the right side up. Then you put C2 where you're going to be sewing your seam face down on top of, so that when I flip it, it'll, the pretty side will be up on the triangle. And I make sure that it covers all of the triangle before I sew. Remember also when paper piecing, you want to put your stitch length on a smaller stitch length. You know, usually it defaults when you turn your machine on to 2.5 or such. Let's go down from that to maybe 1.4, even 1.2. Makes it easier to tear the paper off. It does make it harder to rip it out if you make a mistake. Ask me how I know. I just had a big mistake on this one. So, it does make it a little harder, but not impossible. And it does make it easier when you go to tear your paper off. So, we have our pieces placed on here. I'll put it under my foot. And I will sew right on the line. I'm using a foot. This is a quarter inch foot. But what I like about it too is I can either be doing quarter inch seaming with it, but it's also straight down the middle. So I just line my line up, my sew line up right on it, and I'm able to sew right on that line with that going straight down the center right there. So it's just a nice foot. If you have one like this, there's lots of different feet to use. Anything that is such that you can see that line when you go to sew, because your sew line is your darker line and the dotted line is where we'll cut when we're done and we will work on section c then we will put a and a to b and then um, a to c together and we'll have the center okay so we've gotten the center part done and now we're adding our triangles we work on opposite sides of each other when we go to add them with f d e f and g and um, you want your piece to be bigger than the area that you're covering. Um, so when I go to put it on, I'm going to put it so it overhangs like so. And then um, I like to bend this down like so, so that you can see where your sew line is going to be or feel where your sew line is going to be. And then I put this on top of it. So I know where to sew my quarter of an inch here. And I pin it. Now this time I'm pinning with little pins right on the line as if I've already sewn it. That way I can go back and look and see that I have my point of my triangle so that they come through the center. You want your points to come through the center like so. And I want this point to come through the center like so. So I'll pin this on as if it is a um, you know, sideways like so, as if it's a seam line. And then I'll be able to lift this up and see where I am with my piecing. And if my triangle is a little off center, then I'll come back and I'll repin it and do it again. Um, this is a cumbersome part and not, this is not an easy one. This is sort of like reminds me of Old Maid and what's the other one that I, oh, oh Crazy Ann, that one. I went to somebody, somebody the other day, it was hilarious, they were like, I think she's out of her mind, Ann, but that's kind of how I feel about this one. And you'll notice that I have no more paper on this part. I had to rip it out and then it all fell apart, so yeah, that's where we are on this. Um, you might have better luck not paper piecing it, and you may just want to cut your pieces exactly the measurement she says and go from there. I do better with the paper piecing, personally. Though it doesn't seem like it on here, but it does make it better. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, last two pieces on, and I will be finished with the center and the, these big triangles here. Then I'll be working on individual little corner pieces that will go in um, on the sides. Okay, so the center is done. We're working on our outer Corners. So there are four outer corners that have seven pieces each. And so we started with um, the H, is H, I, J, K are the corners. And you have a little square that has that is H1. And so you work from H1 to H2. 
and what's just up here? I'm sorry, H2. All of um, the little tiny triangles, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are the same color. And then these two pieces that are a square and a rectangle are different. And um, so what I wanted to just share with you is that um, I'm working with rather big pieces that I'm just going to cut off as I go. So like when I sewed this one on, it was a big long piece like this. I just sewed it and then cut that piece off ready for the next um, triangles uh, or rectangles. Um, so now I'm at H6, which is this triangle right here, and it's going to be this yellow. So I fold it up like this so that I know where my stitch line is by just a little fold right there. I place, let me cut this just a minute. There we go. I place my piece pretty side to pretty side, and I'm now ready to sew on my sew line right here. I'll flip it up and cut it off, and then when I go to trim up the whole thing, I'll have little triangles at uh, around the edges. So I'm ready to sew this one on. The folding trick really helps, especially when you're using pieces that are too big. But you don't want to line it up with this edge, obviously, because that's not the edge of the piece. So you just fold it, flip it up, put this one on top, and there's our sew line right there. And when I flip it over to look at it, I know I can sew right along there and be good. So we talked about our nurse's cross and getting all of the center made and then making each of the corners. The corners are the easiest part of this whole thing for me, anyway. It's just quick and easy, putting them, paper piecing them together, um, following one, you know, K1, K2, K3. So you just go from this piece to this piece, then this piece to here, to here, then you do the big rectangle down here, then you add the triangles. Very straightforward. This, on the other hand, is killing me. Killing me, I tell you. Okay. <laughs> I'm redoing it. I don't like it. It seems wonky to me, and I might use it for something else later that it's not, but I'm putting all this time into making the Gypsy Wife quilt. I want it to look the best, so as best as I can do anyway. Um, so I'm redoing it, and I'm liking better how these guys are matching up here, and um, so I'm getting ready to put the second piece on to make, oh, sorry, second piece on to make the center. Now, see how I have these pins in here? When you are putting these triangles onto this really skinny piece, there, there's nothing connecting them. There's nothing there except for that one seam line, and it moves a lot. So I'm finding that if you pin them first, okay, and then put it on here, matching the center squares as best you can, right there and then pin it here in the center right here to hold it in place when you go to sew along your seam line right here when you're sewing along there these underneath pieces are not moving because you've pinned them down i hope that helps some people not to have to redo the center like other people that we might know who have to redo the center i'll come back and show you in a minute my finished product unless of course I hate it and then I'll see y'all more. Okay, so now we're going to add um, the points on the I'll show you on here. We're adding D, E, F, and G on my new. This is my old one. Now we're on to the new one. And um, so I have the piece. This is the block. I have um, D on there. And I just stick a pin, can y'all see that, through here, and I got it right at that point right there, and on the point on this side to help me place where to pin it. And then I can also check where it's pointing to. When I hold up the light, I can see where this point is pointing to directly into the center of my um, block, so, which is what I want it to do. So now I'm ready to sew. D on, and then also E and F and G to get those outside corner pieces. That's these pieces put on there. So I'll come over here, and I will sew 
And just so I can show you before I go off. So there I have sewn it on and now I'm ready. To, I can go back and trim it up, but I'm not going to trim it yet until I put on the other pieces. So I can see, but I'll iron it, I'll press it right here. And I'll go back and trim, if I need to, trim that seam allowance because we want to make sure that we have that trimmed off. If you don't, you end up with um, kind of bulky underneath, especially with this turquoise, it would show through in my lighter color pink. So I don't want that to happen. So I want to make sure I trim those seam allowances down. So now I'm ready for E. So I'm going to cut my piece. Scissors. Okay. Cut my piece. Put my right sides together. Right there. And then I'll put my piece on top pointing straight directly into the center of my square, but double check it by putting a pin from one side to the other, and when it comes out, point, and you put it in there, then you know you're in a good spot, okay? And I'm going to pin that piece on. I, again, I like to use my flat head pins so that when I go to put it down, it's not bumping up or in my way. So then I'll put this in and I'll sew it, and then I'll get the other two put on. Okay, so here is, upside down because I want my flower at the bottom, but here is a finished nurse's cross, and I'm pleased with it. It is eight and a half inches, and I'm done. I hope everyone else is more successful than I was um, on the first go-round, though I will say maybe if you start with your outer pieces and do those first, and then make this inside, you can do that because of the way it's put together. It's, um, you can do these outer pieces first and then go back and do the inside. Um, it is a bit challenging, but I am happy with the results and I'm happy that I chose some different colors to make it stand out a little more. I needed more yellow. I'm glad I put everything up on the wall. I needed a little more red. So I'm pleased with the color choices that I've made with this and I'm happy um, to be moving on to Indian Hatchet now. This is Elizabeth Townsend Guard from Just Wanna Quilt. You've been listening to Gigi Bai take us through an aspect of the Gypsy Wife Quilt by Jen Kingwell. Make sure you get the pattern. You can get the pattern at Amazon or Uptown Needle and Craft Works here in New Orleans or at your local quilt shop. Um, you need the pattern to be able to understand what's going on and then um, Gigi helps us through it. So join us. Come play with us. Come to our Facebook group, Just Want a Quilt. Uh, go to our website and be part of our newsletter where we'll help you through the Gypsy Wife Quilt. Um, that's JustWantAQuilt.com, spelled W-A-N-N-A, Just Want a Quilt. Um, and of course, listen to our podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and if you can't a chance to like it on those, it would be super awesome. <laughs>